Hello everybody! Right, so Vintage Thursday will be along shortly, but first, we have something exciting we're going to launch on the channel. Um, we have this autumn, winter season, and we have teamed up with FarmFlix, the uh, online video provider of farming videos, funnily enough. Um, so what we're doing, they have provided me a link, down in the, in the description box is a link that will take you to FarmFlix's site. Um, they, you've got to use that link so that they know that I have sent you. Um, so what they're offering is if you click that link, you will get a free 24-hour trial um, of, their, uh, of their content. So they're offering you a free 24-hour trial. Um, it is a subscription-based service, um, but you, what you must do is you must take your, take your uh, advantage of the free trial and then go away and think about it. And if you, you know if you like what you see, you can come back and uh, sign up should you wish to. Um, there's absolutely no pressure. Um, it is a totally free trial it's not one of these oh it's free but give us your credit card details just in case you know it is walk in the door have a look around make move, make use of your 24 hours um and uh, get as much as you can but so you get a good get a good idea of what actually they're offering um so what is there there is kind of four sections to farm flicks um you get the uh, the straight six which is kind of machinery based you get stockyard which is more of your stock funny enough that stock stockyard based uh, there's a lot the loft um, and there's ag life, so there's kind of bits. There's something for there for everyone. Um, it's not it's not all one or the other. It is a whole, whole range of the whole uh, farming category. You know, there's a bit there's a bit of everything. Um, it's not just in this country. Um, it's it's UK. It's Ireland. It's it's America. Um, there's some really interesting stuff from America. Obviously, American farming's on a totally different scale to what we got here in the UK. Um, so go and check that out. Just see the size of some of the stuff is unreal. Um, so what you could do with your farm flex once you have taken the, uh, the the trial you could suggest to a family member that one that's struggling to get you something for christmas a farm flex subscription could be the ideal christmas present for example you could buy it for you could buy it for a friend or a family member and give it as a gift or if your family is struggling to find something for you you could make a suggestion that um you know here you are you know this is available i wouldn't mind this for christmas uh, you know if you if you feel like buying me a subscription um, one of the big benefits uh, of buying buying for other people. So the FarmFlix shopping experience is COVID secure, which is a, which is a phrase that didn't exist last year. Um, so there's none of that going in shops, getting in crowds and all that. Um, it's all online through the link below. Um, another benefit, if you're buying for somebody else, there's no awkward shaped presents to wrap if you buy them a FarmFlix subscription. So keep that in mind. So there we go, don't forget, click in the link below, um, take full use of the trial, even if, you, you know, if you've never heard of them, or if you have heard of them, you've always fancied to go, you know, wondering what they're about, click, this, click the link in the description, that will then take you into the website, uh, and by following my link, they will know that it's me that has sent you. Um, so if you do that, please, that would be much appreciated, um, and there is no pressure, like I said, take your, take your, take your 24 hours, um, and have a think about it for a day or two, and then maybe come back later on. It's entirely up to you. There's no pressure on my part pushing you into this. Um, it's just something that I can offer you as a free trial. Totally, uh, totally unpressurized. If you choose not to carry on and purchase a subscription, you just walk away and I haven't enjoyed your 24 hours. So there we are. So now we will go into the proper video of Vintage Thursday. Um, so today um, it's kind of the first in the winter series of repair and maintenance videos. Um, we're too late in the year now to be doing any work um, with machines out in the field so this is going to be our new home for the winter and um, we're in the shed so this is where all the uh, <coughs> activities are going to take place we've got lots of stuff coming up hopefully so we're on a little job quick easy job today and we've got some more involved jobs coming up and then we've got some massive jobs coming up later again so <coughs> what we're doing today we are repairing a fuel tank today just a quick repair job today on a fuel tank we will zoom in and have a look at what we're going to do Okay, so what we have, this is a petrol tank from a Ferguson tractor. Um, now this is from a, an early Ferguson, a TE20. Um, so the first type that came out. Um, what's a little bit different about that tractor, um, that's got the Continental petrol engine in it. Um, which is the first sort of engine, first type of engine that got put in. Um, when they first started building them, it was an American imported engine because the standard engines from the UK weren't ready for production at the time. So, the early ones had a Continental petrol engine in them. So what we're going to do today, this petrol tank has 
in the underside. Um, it's got a leak here I can see and um, we're going to have to put some liquid in to check it to make sure there's no leaks anywhere else. I'm not sure at this point if there is any more other than this one. But what sets this, the Continental fuel tanks apart from the standard petrol engine fuel tanks, which I just happen to have here for the demonstration purposes. Um, you can see on the Continental tank it is a recessed filler neck, whereas on the pet standard petrol tank it's just uh, soldered into the top. Uh, this Continental one is like a bayonet fitting, like a half turn and the lid is off. The standard tanks are screw held on with the chain so you can't lose it. Okay, so slightly different on the early ones to the later ones. Now this, this petrol tank would fit on a Continental tractor, um, but it wouldn't be right because of the, the recessed neck um, and the different cap. So the Continental engine tractor joined the collection in 2012 and I bought that because I, it was the final one I needed to join the collection of all the different engine types that Ferguson's had. Um, so I've got a, a straight petrol, a petrol TVO, a diesel, a P3, Perkins P3 engine, um, and I needed the Continental engine to complete the set that I wanted. So when I bought this tractor, it was converted during its lifetime to run on TVO. So during the last few years I have been gradually converting it back to straight petrol. Um, so this is not the tank from the tractor, this is one I have acquired. Um, the tank on the tractor is a split petrol TVO tank, which we, we, which we will be taking off in time once this is repaired to go back on. So first thing we need to do, we'll just flip it over. Uh, we need to put in the fuel tap bolt assembly, um, just to make sure we don't leak. So we'll screw that in. So we just screw the tap in. Threads clean, um, and then we can. What we do? We'll put a little bit of brake cleaner in because that will uh, evaporate nice and quickly. So we'll just put it up on some chunks of wood just to protect the tap. Just put a little glug of just just standard brake cleaner. Just put a little bit of that in. Swirl it around. Just to check for leaks. Ooh, pouring out the hole I knew about. Right, so quickly, let's swirl around. Check for other. There it is coming out the hole. That's the big hole we knew about. Okay, so that's the hole, hole by the tap that's coming out of. Right. Right, so all that's drained, we'll just put the tank to drain that little bit of brake cleaner out. We'll just tidy the bench up. Right, so we'll just take the tap out now. And we don't need the tap, it's kind of in the way a little bit for where we want to be. Want to be working to put that to one side, just mop up. Mop up a bit of mess. Right, so that's good news that we've just got the one hole we, we knew about. It is fairly big. Now I'm trying to get you a close up. Okay, so this is the hole here right in the end of my finger. You can it should camera should be showing it. Um, it's a little just a little rust pit. That's all it is, just a rust hole where some dirt or sediment has been sitting uh, over the years. So what we're going to use, we have got. So we've got some fuel tank repair uh, putty, I guess you'd call it. And so what's it, what's interesting about this stuff? Um, this is the very first. Vintage Thursday video where the parts we're using, i.e. the putty, has been purchased from the money 
that you guys have bought a vintage Thursday mug or, or, or a mug. Um, so, the, so the little bit of... So I have bought this putty with the money left over or generated by the mug sales. So if you bought a vintage Thursday mug or a logo mug, they are still available. Link in, in the description box is full instructions how to obtain one. So if you have bought one, you are now safe in the knowledge. You have, what's the word, contributed to a Vintage Thursday video, i.e. this one. So here's our putty. So what we need to do, we get a full list of instructions about how to repair our tank. So what we need to do. Right, da, 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 da. remove any rough edges or, or any unevenness around the targeted area with sandpaper. So what we'll do, we've got sandpapers in the kit. Everything comes in the kit. Right, we've got some rough and some smooth. I'm going to go a little bit rougher. I've got some in these stores. Right, so I've rated the stores. I've just got a, this is a disc off a dual action sander. Um, it's rougher than what they supply. So I'm just going to take the, take the worst of the rust out. Most of it's gone already. Just get a nice shine the area. Okay, just wipe that off and then we will go to the supply time paper just to rough the area up. Off. Uh, we'll just use a bit of solvent just to get the get it properly clean and wipe it away. Because to get this to stick, everything has got to be spick and span, spotless and shiny. And we're going to clean again in a minute anyway. Right, so there's all the sanding debris removed. So next step on the instructions. Using the provided alcohol wipe, so we will, oh two, using the provided alcohol wipe, da -da -da -da. clean the targeted area thoroughly. There we go. No. Not very big. Yeah, they're a bit mean with the old alcohol wipe. Good have we got my own brake cleaner. Right, so. That's nice and smooth. I can feel it smooth under my fingers, so there's no rust left on there. Right, so there we are. Cleaned. Cleaned with the alcohol wipe. So we'll let that dry off. Um, it's nice and warm in the shed because I've got the old wood burner going. I'm sorry to do this. Putty will be warm um, and it will go off nicely with that bit of heat coming from the fire because it's cold and foggy and miserable outside because it is December. Right, next stage. Mix the exploit putty until the compound has an even consistency and colour. New spatula. Oh, we've got a spatula. Oh, we've got it. Oh. Right, so what this is, this is a two part compound. Let's do your close up. So hopefully you can see it's black on the edge, um, white in the center. So what we need to do is slice a little bit off, mix it to get, so because it's black and white, as we mix it, it will become gray. Once it's an even gray color, and it's then ready to use. So they supply us a razor blade and a little spatula for spreading it. You get it all in the kit and some gloves. So we will put the gloves on. Because my hands are, I'll give you one glove, oh well, that's a bit mean, isn't it? I'll give you one glove then. Right. So let's just... Oh, that's a bit nasty. Don't know how much we're going to need. Hmm, not a great deal. Let's just slice the end off.
Okay, so there you can see it's like a what do they call them? Licorice comfort? No. So what? So what you get in old Berkeley Bassett's assortment anyway? But you wouldn't want to eat it. So we'll give that a. We we'll just do it in our bit of metal there. A bit of foil on the edge. Oh dear, we've still got some wrapping on there. On that. Right. So what we'll do we just knead this between our fingers so that it changes to an even consistent colour. Get all the get all the wrap it off. Okay, so we're achieving a colour now, it's not there yet, but we're going. Right, I'll do we're grey. So what we will do, it's what it says. Apply x y putty onto the targeted surface and make sure it covers the damaged area. So we can easily see the damaged area because basically it's a hole. So we'll put this on, knead it in, it should hopefully kind of grow in, push down through the hole a little bit and provide a bit of a better key on. We'll work it in well, make sure it sticks well. Don't really need the spatula. Uh, I guess that's for a different application, so if you need to push it in somewhere. Um, it's working well, just putting it in with my fingers. And that's it. Right, so the final step of the instructions it says wait one hour for the compound to cure, then sand the edges for a smooth finish. Um, well, this is going to be obviously this is upside down at the minute, so we're going to flip it over with a tap on. Um, this repair is going to be hidden behind the tap. Um, obviously because the tap sits here, maybe that way, um, with the knob outwards. Um, so you're not going to see it. So I'm not going to worry about sanding it smooth. I'm just going to leave it where the shed is nice and warm. It will go off nicely. I mean, because it's miserable cold outside. And plus warm in here, this will go off within the hour easily. So this will cure out nicely. Uh, we're not going to bother sanding it. It's not going to be seen. Um, so, so this will go rock hard. It will, because I've port forced into the hole in the tank it's gone in just a little bit so that will again provide a key to hold it on um, this stick of remaining stuff and um, because we haven't mixed the two parts um, that will stay good we'll keep it in this little packet um, keep the glove and all the sandpaper and everything and this will be good to go for another another job so there we go fuel tank repaired right so there we go end of repair so what we're going to do now it says leave it an hour, we're going to leave it probably a month, I expect at least. Um, so this, this tractor, this Continental engine tractor, uh, will become the subject of several future videos. Um, it's been in uh, hibernation really for three or four years probably, um, because the, the, the tyres on it perished. Uh, we're going to be putting new tyres on it. Um, we are going to have to, because it's been sat for a long time, we're going to take the carburetor off. That will come into the shed to be stripped, cleaned. Uh, new gaskets and valves and all that going into it so that will be another video coming up and I've got all new ignition components so I've got points condenser um, plugs that all need to go in because again because it's not run for a long time uh, it'll be a little bit corroded in there so this tractor is going to be a subject of kind of a uh, recommissioning basically um, now if you watch the, the introduction Vintage th or when I when I introduced Vintage Thursday, um, I mentioned this tractor or a tractor would be being recommissioned. We're actually getting around to it now. I was expecting to get there sooner, but we're uh, we're doing it now. So that over the winter, uh, it will be a few videos leading up to the thing actually running um, and doing some jobs. But it won't be actually doing jobs till next year now. But it's all going to be coming up. So subscribe if you haven't already done so to you know hang around, see the Vintage Thursday. Um, see this tractor come back to life so next job on the tractor will probably be the carburetor because again I can do that in the shed in the warm um, we will need to do points and plugs and all that where it's to because you know obviously I can't start it to get it into the it's not in here at the minute it's in the storage shed so I need to do all that where it's to um, front tires have been done back tires are in the process of being done I might make you a video because we've got to treat the rust in the rims so look out for a back tire changing video it's all, uh, it's all exciting stuff around here. So, there we go. Repair finished. Here is our, the outline of our putty. 
so that'll be the end of the video so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time